Hey, hey, Music Therapy Labs here on a Sunday morning. I'm doing part two of my finish, uh, finish work on the tabletop set. I'm planning to do the same color on the uh, Tele build out of the same redwood. So let me show you something real quick. Let me grab the camera out of here. So notice how this came out. Really nice. It's definitely going for a similar color to that table there. Not exactly matching the uh, table that we have inside the house. That's an acacia wood. So, um, she's on planes overhead. <laughs> They're buzzing us. <laughs> yeah, so here's this table here. I knocked down a little of the black. So the black uh, kind of came out a little too dark. And I just knocked it down a little bit with the uh, scotch pad and uh, a little bit of water. Oh, well, I can't go in there right now. She's trying on some clothes. Let me do this real quick. Now I'm just going to show you guys this table right here, how this looks. So this has a little bit more of a brownish to it. Uh, it's acacia wood, more grainy, and it was sandblasted, obviously, before they put this finish on it. Out here, uh, of course, I have the ability to sandblast. And uh, it wouldn't look the same because this is redwood, so the grain is a completely different grain. But I kind of like how this uh, turned out anyway. So, um, you know, I've got the, uh, the gray, the beige gray underneath. A little of that, that black dye on the top and it's kind of got this purpley kind of color which goes really kind of close to this right so what do you guys think did it get close enough i think it's close enough so what i'm going to do now is put this uh back in its spot right here and show you guys my my uh clear coating technique so i've got my uh handy dandy little brush again and I'm going to uh, mix this stuff very well. I'm using this water-based Homesman Spar Urethane Satin. I wish they made it into matte because I'd really like a matte finish more than the satin. But I think it'll be fine. I think it'll look fine. If I really want to matte it down, I can just buff it down a little bit with some, you know, really, really light, uh, not necessarily steel wool, but uh, I like to use this scotch pad stuff. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So. You have this purple kind and a gray kind. The gray kind's even lighter than this. So similar to what you'd see on the back of a sponge, you know, but um, this is not as abrasive. And then the gray kind is even less abrasive. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that technique I showed before um, around the edges first. So I just pat a little finish on, not too heavy because I don't wanna splat when I pat. <laughs> But that kind of gets it into the little little spots, and I'm looking at it at an angle where you need to get a little light coming on it, so you can see that you have finish everywhere. And uh, I'm going to continue around. Now, as I mentioned yesterday, some of that gray stain is going to probably come off with this uh, with this first coat. So it's it's going to kind of come off into the brush. I don't know if you notice some of the blackness in the brush there. Which is not bad because it's going to help blend it all. It's going to help blend all of it together. So it doesn't look as streaky as it does now. It's a little bit streaky, but not too bad. It did a good job with the application. So it's a really fun project, to be honest. Uh, you know, we don't always have or spend time on these kinds of things. I think we get a little disconnected from uh, not just nature, living the. Uh, suburban life that we live we get disconnected from uh you know uh the creative side of our nature we're so just busy working you know which is not bad i'm not saying work is bad work is good but uh, it's good to to you know express yourself creatively in ways so notice how much of that black is coming off right so that dye stain definitely you know it's a dye stain and even though it was on here since last night it's going to come off when it's wet a little bit. So we want that in a way because we want it to blend. So if I forgot to mention um, the dye stain that I'm using over that uh, stain that I created out of... Uh, uh, I can grab those stains for you at the end of the video and show you what they are, but it's uh, made by General Finishes, which you won't find in your average paint store. <laughs> you know, might be able to get it ordered online because it's water-based and they'll ship water-based stuff to you if it's paint you probably won't ship you know the alkydes or the oil-based stuff but that's it's 
probably flammable and dangerous to ship. All right, so here we go. Just adding a little bit on there. Get a little first coat. I don't want to go too heavy. I want to do a nice light coat. And then now I'm just going to go, you know, from one side to the next. Oops. Never put the can on top because you might make a can ring, if you know what I mean. And here you want to apply quickly because you don't want to, again, lose that wet edge. So the wet edge being the, uh, the wetness of the finish. You want to have that wetness over there. And then you can notice already over here we're getting some of that finish coming up off of the table. So I'm wiping a little bit to make it so it evenly does that. Because the uh, finish is, of course, going to blend with the, the stain is going to blend a little bit with this top coat finish. So you got to watch for that, kind of stay with the grain. So you don't want to take too long. Okay, we keep going. Applying all the way so I get an even, no kind of splotchiness occurring. Notice that here on this side, so I quickly adjust my technique to work with what's going on as the stain is kind of coming up with that. Going across a little bit so that it evens out. Back there too, it's definitely already, and it's kind of get, it's going to be a hot day here in California, in the Bay Area. So here it kind of already started to dry, created a little bit of blotchiness, so I'm kind of wiping over that a bit. But yeah, you gotta move fast, man, because if you're not moving fast enough, it's gonna dry up on you so quick. And you're gonna have that splotchiness that you do not want. You know what I mean by splotchiness. <laughs> All right, yeah, looking good. So it definitely has that driftwood look. That's exactly what I wanted it to look like. Looks awesome. Keep that wet edge going. Drying so fast, it must be like 80 something degrees already. Didn't even look at the temperature. I didn't have much choice. I gotta get it done. Mom's leaving town, she's heading to Europe. So I gotta, gotta get this done. We're gonna have a little barbecue at my bro's house in San Ramon. So we gotta, gotta get her done here. No time for goofing around. Looks nice. Love it. Love this look. Yeah, definitely gonna do the telly in this driftwood look. It looks so cool. I don't think I've seen too many uh, guitar style. I mean, you see a lot of, you know, kind of road-worn looks and this, that look, you know, kind of de-stressed looks, but um, I don't think I've seen like a, maybe I'm just, you know, imagining that I haven't seen it, but I don't think I've seen any uh, guitars with like a uh, driftwood finish. So that'll be kind of cool, right? Especially over redwood. Redwood is such a nice, such a nice wood, right? And what I've been told by some uh, builder experts out there is that to expect more of a uh, softer, sweet, mellow tone, not as bitey or bright as a typical telly might be with the, you know, with the uh, typical body woods that they'll use like ash or whatnot right but why not do uh why not do redwood so it's going to be soft you know obviously it's going to be in studio all the time i'm not going to gig it probably you know because it'll be too dangerous it will too easily i could damage too easily right if i gig with a soft wooded uh, guitar like that i'm just wiping the edge here to get it kind of even this little bit of Even out that color there. There we go. Looks good. Looks cool. That's not Roxy. I know you hear a bird, but it's not Roxy. I wish it was Roxy. I got Roxy's little house up here, waiting for her to come back. I don't know if that's ever going to happen. She's probably having too much fun out there in the world. I'm hoping that she's able to take care of herself out there, right? So let me kind of give you guys a quick view of this. I don't know if you can see that. I hope this isn't falling into the paint can. 
oh, tripod. The tripod is getting stuck on the makeshift. Uh, so there's a little bit of a streakiness going on here that I could probably get rid of by going like this, you see? Going with the grain. See how I'm going with that grain? And it just takes it away a little bit. There we go. Here too, I'm gonna go with the grain a little bit and it takes away a little of that streakiness. Here too, I'm gonna follow that grain a little bit. And this being the first coat, I'm not too worried about, you know, the streaks of the brush stroke showing on the finish because I'm gonna sand this slightly and give it, uh, give it a, several more top coats. See how I'm going with that grain there? See how it takes away that streak there? Here too we have those streaks. Takes away those streaks a bit, right? So that's kind of the technique you want to use going with the grain. Now when you've got these uh, knots, they're swirly, so you can kind of swirl the brush on those, right? But just, you know, take, take down that uh, streakiness a little bit. I use a technique uh, with the brush called uh, plane takeoff and landing. You want to do a light landing and a light takeoff. You don't want to go crash, crash, smash, smash. Does that make sense? So here too, we got some of that streakiness. So we're taking out some of that streakiness. See how well, that works? Cool, right? That's kind of what you can do with brush. You know, you can always then top coat with, with uh, sprays on a guitar or whatever, you know. And people use different techniques, so obviously guitar builders might do things <laughs> completely different and tell me I'm a complete moron, and <laughs> the way I'm doing this is completely nuts. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of having fun with it. And that's all part of the creative process, right? Kind of enjoying, enjoying your work. Enjoy it. You're getting rid of some of that streakiness there. Still got some streakiness here, but yeah same time it's a driftwood look and we don't want to get too picky nice right so we've got this one over here to do but I'm not gonna bore you guys all with that looks pretty cool right now right so these therapy labs on a Sunday part two of the finished work here on the the uh, tabletops and soon sometime this summer maybe end of summer um, the Telecaster build don't forget, the secret of tone is in your mind, but the feel comes from your heart. Sometimes from a paintbrush. <laughs> Put them together and make some music. Rock on.